Hi everyone, welcome back to History San Diego. I'm George Farrar. Previously on History San Diego, I profiled the explorations of San Diego Bay by explorers Juan Rodriguez Cabrillo and Sebastian Viscano, described their encounters with and profiled the Native Americans of the area, the indigenous people, the Kumyi, and we discussed the 1769 conquest with the construction of the first mission in the San Diego area, Mission San Diego de Acala, and the first uprising that it happened in the early months of the conquest. Now we'll explore what happened beyond 1769 up to 1775. So, as we talked about in the last show, on July 16th, 1769, the first mission, San Diego de Acala, was dedicated. They immediately set to work starting to convert the natives to Catholicism, that would go through a slow start punctuated by the first revolt in August 1769. Keep in mind I mentioned the first revolt because there is a second revolt that will happen in 1775 and it will be incredibly brutal. But meanwhile, uh, in 1770, Junipero Serra left San Diego. He would return, but in the meantime he had missions to establish. Ultimately, he would found a total of nine missions throughout what we know of today as California. And word would get back to him, of course, about what would happen throughout this mission system, including what was going to happen in San Diego. And they were getting off to a slow start with reaching out to the native population for a variety of reasons, uh, concerns about food, water, supply lines, things like that. In fact, Water would be what would ultimately lead, eventually, along with other factors, uh, to what would happen when uh, the uh, revolt, the second revolt, happens. So they start to go more inland between 1772 and 1775. Uh, they are on the hunt for better water sources, to be closer to the native population, to do the primary mission, which is conversion. So you have to go where the people are. They won't always come to you, right? And then they would, uh, then they had to deal with the fact that there was flooding because they were close to the bay um, in the original site. And so as they started to get more and more inland, of course, uh, the native population began to realize that these people were really uh, here to stay that they were going to be more and more of a factor in their daily lives, daily lives. As they uh, began to discover this, certainly there were issues, right, with the military uh, and the, uh, the missionaries, the Catholic Church, uh, of the Catholic Church. So there would be these issues that would be coming up, interpersonal issues, um, violence brought upon the population by the occupying soldiers of the military who were in partnership with the missionaries or basically in a forced relationship where they all had to to survive and they had to though in also enforce what they envisioned they wanted to have happening with these with the, with the mission with all the operations around it and how everyone would interact the people that were not involved in it that were not converted and then those that were so Wow, you know, when you think about it, all that was involved and the pressures, pressures and the stressors that were upon everyone in that area as everyone got to know what was going to be coming down the road, literally, right? So, word gets back that there are problems uh, to Sarah. Sarah eventually goes back down to Mexico and meets uh, with the imperial officials uh, and upon prompting by the viceroy, uh, he works on getting a reform, essentially a reform package of uh, how they're going to handle things in the future, giving more power for the, the missionaries to have say, less power over the military to have say in the operations, and, and also identifying, uh, basically granting uh, rights to the Native Americans, of course, with, with which I would tell you, like I did in our previous show, that of course they had certainly the natural rights bestowed upon them. Uh, for the thousands of years that they lived in the area before the conquest. 
1769, and and then having to function in this 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 new world of of um, a new culture, new ways, new customs, uh, new new uh, ways of doing things, new ways of getting things accomplished, and and we talked last show also about the uh, the labor system, right, working, and and how that was because again. If you're going to grow your your mission, grow your capabilities, right? You have to have cultivated the resources because, again, it's all about survival in this situation, right? These people have to survive if you're going to have a mass population. But then also, too, you're dealing with the factors of disease uh, and the fact that thousands of thousands of people were going to, to die in a period of around 30 years. We're talking from 70,000 down to around 15,000. Okay, of the population centered around the coast. So all of this was happening, uh, and there were attempts to respond to what was going on in the area, uh, but those were going to be futile, okay? Because the thing about it is, is the revolt, I think, was more of a result of the fact that, that the mission was actually gaining some success. They actually began to do baptisms. Uh, they were actually getting a labor force together. People were seeing a labor force in areas they had not seen a labor force before. They felt they saw the writing on the wall that they would be enlisted in all of this and they would just be swept up. And so uh, in a last, kind of you could say a last resort, last ditch effort, uh, in 1775, in November of 1775, led by uh, two men named Carlos and Francisco, around uh, 600 Native American warriors of the area, more generally situated south of the San Diego River, uh, swept through the mission complex, burned down the church after having looted it, uh, burned down a lot of buildings, didn't have the opportunity to go towards the military and the Presidio uh, area. Therefore, that survived, which would ultimately lead to the undoing of the attempted uh, revolt of 1775. And in the most hideous uh, event, the most painful event, I would ha have to relay to you in this show, um, and probably and when you look at the overall history we've been talking about since uh, 1542 uh, we have blood spilled and it's blood spilled in a vicious way of arrows at uh, a priest named Louis Jaime who had come to the mission in a year or so after Sarah left and had worked towards conversion and had actually worked towards reform and worked towards trying to do things the right way uh, not perfect, right? None of these people. And as you read, if the more you read about all of this, you're going to see the complexities of who these people were, what their role in all of this was, and how were they supposed to deal with it, right? And you have to go back into those times, not to justify any of the wrongs, because there were there were wrongs all over the place. I could sit here and talk for a long time with you about the wrongs, uh, and they're very vicious and nasty things. Interestingly, after the revolt of 1775, the Spaniards actually granted a pardon to the Native Americans that, uh, throughout the area uh, so that they would move on. Basically, the decision was made to move on from what had happened. So I just described for you what the most critical event in San Diego history was uh, up to that point, certainly. Uh, if it had taken a different direction, let's say the military station there had been wiped out, maybe they made the first move on the military and then the move on to the church, and or uh, if they had had maybe more men, maybe if they had had uh, a, a different, uh, a whole different result, what, what would we have seen? Well, if you think about it, uh, it could have been one of two things. Uh, one would have been a total abandonment uh, when word gets back to Mexico and to the other missions scattered through what we know of today as California. Maybe the idea would have been, well, it's just not going to work out there. Or 
uh, the news travels and the opposite happens. A big, huge sweep of military comes through and order is established to a different way and, and then a direction is taken. Either way, there would have been some interesting directions that obviously didn't happen because of this course of action, just the way it happened to be. These people plan to do this thing. When they plan to do it and they execute it out differently, then what do you have then, right? So certainly the conquest, when you look over the period of up to around eight years or so, um, starts out slowly, starts out somewhat quietly, even with that initial attempt uh, in August uh, of 1769, uh, but it, it builds, it builds, and it's punctuated, of course, then by this, this thing. I hope that our show today has given you some pause, possibly a prompted you to reflect about what happened between the years 1769 and 1775 here in the San Diego area and the different populations uh, and what was going on. Uh, so, in our next show, I want to take a look geographically at the San Diego area as it interrelated to the powers that were the forces on the North American continent from 1542 up to 1789. And I'm excited to be able to bring this to you, so you'll see this next month in March 2022 and I'll go over with you uh, these maps uh, and talk with you uh, about the uh, political, economic, cultural forces and I'll be able to talk a, at a little bit more length about all that was happening uh, around the area uh, when all of this was going on. And then uh, we'll then at that point, talk where, about where History San Diego is going into the future. And I want to thank you for watching. Uh, I uh, want to thank those of you who've uh, been watching our prior shows. I want to encourage you to please check out any shows that you haven't yet seen. Let me know what you think. Please consider subscribing. I have a lot to bring you here on History San Diego. Thanks for watching. Take it easy. See you later.